Well, hello, hello. Welcome to this fine Friday live stream. Hope everyone is having a great time. We got people in the chat coming from all over the world. People from Colombia, people from Chile. You know why? Because we're streaming to Facebook. We're streaming to YouTube. We're streaming to Twitch. We're streaming to Behance. We're streaming to LinkedIn. So say hello, everybody, everybody, wherever you're coming from. Uh, if you chat, I can see it no matter where you're chatting from. It's going to be a good time. Uh, really, really excited about our live stream today. We're going to be talking about some fast color theory this is going to be specifically geared towards ui designers web designers people who are doing digital design how do we make decisions quickly how do we not kind of flounder on the whole aspect where we need to pick colors for our projects we got people coming from all over the world still akira from nepal and uh just more and more people this is awesome hey right on fantastic make sure you uh if you haven't yet make sure you leave a thumbs up subscribe ring the bell so you know when more live streams like this go out i am slightly stuffed up because i'm having some really bad seasonal allergies here in central texas in the united states it is the allergy capital of the world but that doesn't matter because you're not here to talk about allergies you're here to talk about fast color theory that's what we want to do so we want to get right to it Let's talk about color theory, shall we? Before we do, quick outline of the day. We're going to be talking about just general color theory. We're going to go through that very, very quick uh, because you either already know that stuff or uh, if you don't know it, I'm just going to teach you the bare bone basics. Keep this in mind that everything we talk about today is a little snippet. It's a small little pull from my new 30-day UI design program that is launching in October. I already have 175 early backers, people who are on board. It's launching at the end of October, and you too can be an early backer. Not only do you get 50% off the program, but you'll also get a bunch of other really fun goodies, like a one, like a a, a custom direct video from me, who uh, I'll actually uh, give you a review and critique of your capstone project, as well as to be put in the running to win some really fun prizes, merchandise, uh, and you get access to. Uh, like the learning space and inside that learning space we have live events so what's really cool is we already just had our first live event for my early backers it was really really great it was super fun we talked about how to make decisions not just color decisions but ui decisions really really quickly that was a really cool thing so consider becoming a uh, early backer of 30 day ui just go 30dayui.com and let's jump right back in and start talking about some fast color theory let's go through that general color theory real quick it's going to be art school design school 101 but it's okay you're going to be all right you're we're going to get through it let's talk quickly about rgb and hex okay so on the web we use rgb that stands for red green blue right and the hex value that that six digit hexadecimal code represents those colors rgb is what we call an additive color model colors are created by adding colored light to black. I know, stay with me. This isn't, I'm not Mr. Science. I promise it's going to get really, really good here. The RGB color system defines all the colors as a combination of the three different values, a particular shade of red, of green, of blue. So you can see here on the screen, we have an RGB value of 59, 89, 145. Guess what that is? That's your old good old Facebook blue. How about 000? That's black. And 255 times three equals white that's right because we are either adding to or subtracting all color light colors from and that's how we get that rgb value now that hex color system it actually converts directly from rgb so it's going to take those three values of red green blue it's going to pull them into this hexadecimal code right so the hex color system converts each of these values uh, uh on a base of 16. so for instance your facebook blue we have that up there that 3B is the representation of 59. And then 59, 9B, each of those are those different numbers, all right? Every two characters represents it. Simple, simple, easy peasy, lemon squeezy so far. But how do we define color? Well, really quick color theory for you. We often define color in terms of warm or cold, right? Some colors have warmth, others have coldness or a coolness to them. And those warmer colors obviously are on this side of the spectrum of color. We have those yellows, oranges, reds, right? And those cool colors probably over here on this left side, right? But if you probably already knew that, let's keep going. Let's talk about tints and shades because this is actually where we start to get very, very in-depth and important for UI design. 
UI designers need tints and shades. If you don't know what they are, then you struggle to create it and have harmonious color palettes in your mobile apps, web applications, and websites. So if you add white to a color, that's a tint. And if you add black to a color, you create a shade. Here's the easy way to remember it. If you pull the shade down, it gets darker. Therefore, you're adding darkness to a color. That's a shade. The opposite of that, it's a tint. All right, just remember shade and it'll help you remember tint. Tints and shades let you create what are very, very common in UI design, monochromatic color schemes. Because you're adding these varying levels of white and black to whatever your base color is. So let's say this is my base color right here. My fun little hexadecimal code that we just learned about. To the right of it is pop quiz. Is that a tint or shade? You guessed it. That's a tint. To the left of it, when we get darker by adding black to it, what is it? You got it. Everybody's on it today. You're all doing good on a Friday. It's a shade, right? Fantastic. Let's keep going. Let's talk about saturation, hue, and lightness. And this uh, diagram really, really helps me understand. I think it'll help you as well. Saturation is the thing that describes the intensity of color. So you can see here we have our blue. And as we desaturate it, what is it drifting closer towards? towards gray. As we saturate, it's drifting away from gray. Maybe you've heard it called muted colors or muddy colors or desaturated colors, right? This is the idea that we're talking about here. As we drift away from gray, we get bolder, more saturated, more rich colors, very vibrant, right? When we say light blue or dark green, we're usually describing values of saturation. Good. Okay. Hue. Now the word hue defines the degree to which a color can be described as similar to or different from orange, yellow, green, blue, yada, 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 the colors of the rainbow. So when we describe that hue, you can see here on our little chart here, it's actually taking whatever this saturation level is, and you can imagine just spinning it around that little wheel. We're getting different hues. Those are the different kind of colors, quote unquote, right? We often say this with synonymous language. I promise this is all gonna come to a point uh, where we start really digging into some UI design stuff. I promise, promise, promise. Okay, so again, we have our saturation, right? We have our hue as we go around the color wheel, and then you have lightness. Guess what? It's our, it's our vertical axis, right? The, the darker the color, we're going down towards black, or, and that is considered our value. If we get a lighter blue, well, we're going to go up. So if we get a desaturated light blue, we are on this little wedge of the color wheel here giving us blue and we're going desaturated. So that means we're going to go in and we got light. That means we're going to go up. See how this works. It goes in around up, down. Up. Okay, cool. You guys are with me. I'm loving it so far. I hope we're having a good time. Hey, let me know if you have questions in the chat. We're going to head into Q and a uh, right now because Akiri has a question. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. We're going to answer those questions. Ah, people in the chat going, yo, what's up from Nepal? Yo, what's up, Jesse? Hey, right back at you. Love you guys. So excited to hang out with you on this fantastic Friday. So the hex value, yes, is code for RGB. It is basically the RGB value transcoded over into our hexadecimal. The two are interlinked. They are one. It's just a different format. So you can go into your Figma file and you can use the hexadecimal code. You can also use the RGB, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, here's a really great question that I got inside of my Design Champs community. If you don't know, I have a uh, exclusive design community called Design Champs. And inside of that community, uh, there's a fun place where people can meet up, they can show their work, we have live events, all sorts of resources for you. But here was a great question by Rosanna Bryan, newbie designer here. Should I work in the industry employed before becoming a freelancer? Interesting question. If you're going to be, if you're a new designer, maybe you want to go right into freelance. Would it make sense for you to maybe work in the industry a little bit first? And here's the context she gave us. Project manager currently, uh, learning UI UX design and brand logo design. And the end goal would be to work for herself as a freelance designer. However, I'm new to the industry. Do you think I should work in an employed design position before going freelance? What do you think? Tell me in the chat, do you think that Rosanna should work in the industry a little bit or should she just dive right in since that's her end result? I'm interested in what you think. So I actually answered her question and while you guys are thinking about that, let me just tell you my thoughts on the matter. If you're a new designer and you really, really want to go freelance, I do think there is some benefit to learning in the industry. And that means working for other people. Now, excuse me, sniff. 
allergies. Why might you want to work for other people before you go fully freelance? Because here's what people don't understand. I'm releasing a video about this like really, really soon about building a freelance uh, business or an agency, um, you know, and how to scale that agency, be successful as a freelancer. 80% of freelancers bail after their, before their first year is over. It's because they want to do all the design stuff, but they don't want to do the business stuff. So what I told Rosanna is this, you should probably, you could, if you wanted to work for somebody else, because you could learn some of the business aspect of it. Client acquisition, right? Client retainment. Um, how do you do sales? How do you do contracts, invoices, proposals? Uh, how, what happens if somebody asks for a request for a proposal? Do you have a minimum level of engagement? These are all business questions that people really, really should start asking themselves and get used to because I would say as a freelance designer, I would say about 70% of what I do is the freelance or the freelance business and only about 30% of it is the design aspect. And to those of you who are like, I just want to design full time. I just want to go in every day and make the thing. Well, maybe working for somebody else might be good for you then. But if you want to run the business, you're going to have to run the business, okay? Uh, Inquisitor over here in the chat says, I'm a freelancer myself, and I love the freedom that it offers, but you certainly need some knowledge and a healthy amount of confidence. I would, I would never work as an employed person. Interesting. Okay, cool. I lost the keys over here in the chat on YouTube says, I'm rather new to UI UX design. I've been doing web design for a couple of years, but getting comfortable with UI UX. I want to start applying. Uh, I have a few of my best projects in my portfolio. You should start applying. Uh, that's less of a question, more of a statement, but let me respond to it anyways. I think most people should probably start applying before they are ready, before they feel ready. You know why? Because imposter syndrome is a very real thing, my friends, uh, and it will constantly tell you that you're not ready. You need another course. You need another thing to validate your professionalism or your role or your skill set. But I would say start applying before you're ready. You know why? Because there's no such thing as a perfect job and you're going to miss that one job and you'll never have that opportunity again. There's lots of jobs. There's lots of opportunities. And if you miss this one, you're just going to need to grab the next one that's coming down the line. That's what I say. So I say apply before you're ready. It's good to have a portfolio that supports that application process. Portfolio being the number one thing that helps showcase your value as a creative. Speaking of value as a creative, your skills using color. Let's go back to color. The basic color wheel contains 12 standard colors to use to create your color schemes. Now you can mix and match these and they start to blend into each other and we have just millions of potential colors that you can use, okay? So keep this in mind that there's lots of colors. Now we're gonna start diving very specifically into UI design um, uh, right after this next statement, which is there are certain types of color palettes that work for UI design and other color palettes that do not work for UI design. Let's talk about just the standard color palettes you might know and may have heard of. These are monochromatic, just quick little spoiler, that's a great one for UI design. Complementary, also a great one for UI design. Analogous, okay, and now as we start to get further down the list, we start to get less reasonable for your UI designs, right? Analogous, triadic, tetradic, okay, fancy schmancy design words to say different versions of color palettes, okay? Um, there are some great tools, some helpful tools to help you with this idea of color palettes. I wanna show you a few of these helpful tools right now. I'm gonna jump over to the web. And we're just gonna talk about those types of color palettes right now. You can see the first one we have, we're on Adobe Color, uh, or if you do a Google search for Adobe Color or Cooler, you'll find this color palette tool right here. Now we have, uh, again, we have like lots going on here in this interface. We have a little color palette happening in the top right. That color palette is represented by what's going on down here. Uh, but we also have a little graph here and I can start moving this little series of balloons around. And it's gonna try to give me a very analogous or similar colors like in a theme here, right? So let's go down and find something kind of like Facebook bluish. Okay, cool, we're like right down there. An analogous color palette is gonna try as much as possible to mix and match colors that are close together on the color wheel, but might work well together, right? This is done mathematically. It's doing it and trying to keep things within a similar range. What kind of ranges, you might ask? Oh, 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 thank you for asking. The ranges of red, green, and blue. It's trying to keep similar ranges of red, green, and blue for you. And this is an okay color scheme for UI design. Much better might be monochromatic, 
right? As we start to take our picker here, we're just gonna get varying desaturation or lightness and darkness of the same color. So you can see if I pick something like, let's do something a little bit different. Like if I was doing an organic brand or website, I might be in here in these kind of uh, greenish, orangey kind of tones, greenish, orangey, greenish, kind of organic yellowy tones like this, that might work. In UI design, this might be a great background, something that's like a little bit more anchored. This might be a great neutralized color for a secondary button. These are some great colors over here. So this is a monochromatic. It's gonna work all the way down this line. It's just gonna work straight backwards, pulling in varying hues and values, okay? And the last one that works really, really well for uh, for UI design is going to be complementary. Why? Because it's going to take the same ideas of monochromatic, except it's going to kick over and find us some sort of fun complementary color. What's complementary, you ask? It basically just means opposite on the color wheel, right? You can see here as I start to move around. This is why you see a lot of classic combinations of blue and yellow or purple and green, like the Joker, right, from Batman. We got reds and greens, we got orange and blues. These are classic combinations of color and they're just pretty much always gonna work. Now you'll notice everywhere I kind of switch around on this, we're getting our color palette. We're able to see that color palette up there and because it's Adobe, we can save it to our Adobe tools, which is pretty cool. Now you can get into all these other ones like split complementary, double split, blah, 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 blah. But let's look at an even, like simpler color tool to use. This one is over at Canva, Canva slash color slash color wheel. Check it out, folks. We have a nice complementary color palette happening here, don't we? Pick complementary and we can just kind of move around. Now, what I like about this is it's starting to kind of apply it to the quote unquote website behind it. I just get like a visual cue of what's kind of happening here, right? So I can imagine like this being my website and I have like some sort of green button that's gonna be in there. That feels pretty good. And you can also take the value of lightness and darkness and move that around. So that's a fun tool as well. Also a really good read. If you're trying to learn a little bit more about these, you know, color combos, Canva did a good job here. Um, let's talk next about another great tool that I really, really enjoy. Um, oh, yep. Yeah. Somebody saying that the live stream is not working on LinkedIn. I know we're having some serious issues streaming on LinkedIn. We'd like to make it work, but for some reason it's not. That's okay. Uh, this is Coolers, another great resource. Uh, there is iOS apps, Figma plugins, Chrome extensions for this, or you can just use it in the browser like I'm about to start right now. Two things you can do here really explore some great trending palettes. Let's look at that really quickly because this is exactly what you think it would be. You can just explore to our heart's content, find a great palette. Look at that, we click on it, what do we get? Tap pop quiz, you get yourself a little hex code you can bring over into your design tool, which is really great. Or if we go back, we can actually start generating from scratch. This is a really fun experience as well. Uh, you can see here we have a good color palette. Now we can just press space on the space bar and it's gonna keep generating fun color palettes. Maybe you like this, but you don't love maybe like one of the colors. Maybe you don't love this one. So what we can do is come in and just lock these values. Check this out and lock that one on the right hand side behind my face. Press space bar and now it's just going to add or change the value in this singular box. Maybe that works for you. Maybe we like this version a little bit more. Boom, we got us a color palette. We could then go ahead and export that color palette. Pretty cool stuff over here on uh, coolers.co. I encourage you to go and support this one. This is another fun one. This is, um, this is color dot, and this is a way to generate color palettes. Now, <laughs> you'll notice as I drag my mouse up, I'm getting darker values, lighter values. As I go left and right, I'm getting different, the actual color values here, right? And if I like one that I find, right, I can go here, click, and it saves it. Now moving on, right? Which can be kind of fun as we start to create, you know, some fun color palettes. So if you're looking for exactness, this probably isn't your jam, but it is a lot of fun. We have one more. I really like this online tool. Really, really fun. This is Real Time Colors. Um, and what you can do is come to Real Time Colors and you can choose those colors if you want. Uh, and as you start to choose them, it will change it to be kind of like live on the website. So one thing is when you're choosing color palettes, you can kind of be like exploring these in a vacuum. And it feels like, I'm not really sure if this is gonna work. Sometimes it's just nice to see it immediately applied to like some sort of layout. So for instance, let's say we found a color palette over here on coolers that we really, really like. Let's go back. We might explore some trending palettes. 
I go like, hey, this one's really cool. I like this trendy palette. Let's get the dark color right there out of it and come back over to real time colors. And why don't I paste that hex value in there? Okay. Why don't I go back and I'm gonna back over here and why don't we get that lighter green and why don't I go for my secondary and pop that lighter green in and then why don't I pull like let's just if we're just going to do three let's just go with this yellow shall we we'll grab this yellow and we'll go for our accent color boom like that and now we have kind of an example as we scroll down look it's giving us it's mixing them into little uh you know like fun little alert boxes we got primary secondary buttons here um you know we got like some nice usage in the background. Even the background has like changed, right? Now, if you don't know what you like, what's really fun is you can come in here and you could just hit the little dice at the bottom. That's gonna randomize the colors or you can hit space bar. Boom, we just randomize and get different color values here. And you can see it applied in lots of different fun ways. So this is really just a way to give you some sort of idea of how it might go. It's actually like fast forwarding your mood boarding or style tiling process to create some visual representations. It's kind of fast forwarding that process and just giving you really, really quick ideas. And that's why we're talking about quick color theory today. Let's talk about some other tools that might be really helpful to you. We'll talk specifically about some color palettes, uh, excuse me, Figma color plugins. And these are some great plugins that I think you're really, really gonna like. Let's start with, you know, just a simple color palette tool right here inside of Figma. We can search through, we could type things like for instance, let's look for the word organic and see what it comes up with. Let's see if it comes up with anything. Not sure if it'll, if it will. Oh, maybe it won't. Okay, let's, let's get rid of the searching because for some reason that is not working. But I tell you, kind of just scrolling through these, there's an organic color palette right there. Why don't we just press plus and guess what it did? Whoop, it put it right on the page for us. And now we could turn these into our local styles, uh, each individually here up in the right hand corner. Oh, turn that into a style if we wanted to. That's pretty cool. So being able to search, and this is just the color palettes um, uh, plugin inside of Figma. And again, if you don't know where to find plugins inside of Figma, it's real easy. Go back to your homepage and drop down here at the very bottom and you'll see explore community. Whoop, just like that. And it jumps you into the community. And you look, you can just type in the word color here and jump over to plugins. And we have plugins, we have widgets, we have all sorts of stuff. I mean, there are so many plugins in the Figma community. It's off the hinges. They're loading right now for some reason because my internet is slow. But don't worry, trust me, they're in there. All right, so let's keep cruising because color palettes is a cool one. Let's jump next over to actually one of my favorite ones right now, which is the Tailwind CSS Color Generator. Um, this is really great for design developer integration, handoff, and like partnership especially if your developers use the Tailwind CSS kind of like method. They're using Tailwind CSS, that would be a good one. But what we can do here is uh, we can find our uh, HSL values or our hex code values. Let's say like we found, actually, you know what? Let's go back and just utilize this. We'll go, let's grab this hex code value there. And I'm actually gonna grab the lighter one and you're gonna see why here in a second. Jump back over, let's plug in our hex code value there. Now what's cool is we get, uh, the option to generate a color guide. It gives us a name for our color, Limeade. That's pretty fun. And then we can create styles and or variables. Let's create styles first, boom. It created this beautiful like style layout and this color guide for us. But look, when we click on the canvas, guess what it made in here? Oh, it made an entire color scale for us. Let's move myself out of the way. Now, when we're starting to build our website or our application, we have all of the colors from uh, our color style. Now, the next thing we could do is we could also create variables. Boom shakalaka. Uh, what do we have as well? We have all of them baked right into Figma variables inside of our local components area or local variables. So that's super nice, built right in, and those are all called Limeade, which is really, really fun. Okay, so you could imagine doing this with all your different colors, like maybe you had like also like a blue that went with it. Let's create styles, unclick that and create variables. And now look at that. We have 
your sapphire and your limeade styles over here in your local styles. You also have your local variables. Oh, look at we're building things so fast and nice. Isn't that nice? It's nice. I like it a lot. Okay. Now, um, if you're asking yourself, yeah, that's really cool. Like what are the tools you got for me, Jesse? Let's jump into another one. This is called the A11Y or Ally. This is really great for color contrast checking. Uh, inside of the course, we talk all about accessibility, building accessible user interfaces. We have an entire section on that. Um, and we talk about all the different ways. You got to check uh, your accessibility, not just for color, but for type size, touch triggers, tap points, all that good stuff. Uh, if you're interested in becoming an early backer, definitely check it out. Shameless plug for the 30-day UI designer program. It's not a course. It really is more than a course. It's a 30-day program. Think of it like that 75 fitness challenge, uh, but in 30 days for you to become a really confident UI designer. That's what we want. So I kind of kicked out all of the fluff that you don't need and just kept all the basics and the things that are you really, really need to build a powerful portfolio and skill set as a UI designer. Okay, so with this one, we'd be able to like click on any component or element and then we can actually check it and see it's telling us, hey, triple three. And if you don't know about accessibility, that's like the best of the best. It's saying, hey, this meets all the triple color contrast requirements, right? We're compliant on all of these different uh, like color contrast checks. That means people with color blindness and different variations of accessibility issues. Um, this is going to work out great for them. So definitely check out that one if you want to build some really accessible stuff, the ally color contrast checker. You could also use something like Stark. That's a great accessibility plugin as well. Let's talk about the next one, which would be UI Color Palette. UI Color Palette is a bit of a busy plugin when you look at it. So I don't love this one, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll show you. Actually, I, 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 there's a part of me that just wants to skip this one, but I'm going to show it to you anyways. You see how we have multiple colors selected here? Well, with those multiple colors selected, we can create a material design palette. We can do custom with up to like, I forget what it is, like 90 different stops on our color scale. But let's just go with, you know, the material design style, which is 50 to 900. When, when you see 50 to 900, that's just a method of labeling your colors on a scale going from lightest to darkest. And it's a way to associate like, hey, which color are you using today, Bob? Oh, we were using Sapphire 900. Oh, Sapphire 900. Gotcha. It's a way to create common language easily accessible for your team. So let's just go ahead and create that and click on create UI color palette and boom, you see something generates behind it. Let's just zoom out, shall we? And take a look at it just like that. It's created all of your colors that we selected there and it made that color scale all the way down, okay? For each of those. And it has like nine or 10 stops. Now this is an okay plugin. I like it. I don't use it in the program, which by the way, Mariona is asking, when is it launching? The program is launching at the end of October, but you only have another week and a half or so to become an early backer before everything shoots up to a full price. So I'd love to get you inside there, Mariona, if you want it for 50% off and all the goodies. So I don't use this plugin. I like it. It's okay. But what I will either you know, encourage you to do is use that Tailwind CSS generator, or I do actually really like the Google Material Design Theme Builder. This is built by the Material Design team over at Google. It's free to use, which is another benefit for me. I like free stuff. I don't love plugins that I have to pay for extra stuff or a monthly subscription. Can I just rant for a second? A monthly subscription for a plugin frustrates me because a singular plugin just doesn't feel like it offers me enough value. Is anybody, is, am I just crazy? Is it weird? Like before Figma integrated like spell check, there was like, you had to pay $7.99 a month for like a spell check plugin and it just frustrated me. Sorry, quick rant, I'm all done. Let's just the hot take, okay? Uh, but this theme builder is actually really, really good. And what it can do is allow me to basically grab my primary color here I can change that primary color. So let's go back over and pick like, let's say this is our, this light green is our primary color, shall we? Okay, I'll come back into my material design builder. Boom, I pick that color and I'm gonna apply it. And I'm telling you right now, do you see the work it, that the plugin is doing right now, right? You're gonna see everything. Look, everything's starting to change. We saw the green colors in here change. But you're, you'll see the background, you'll see everything is gonna pop and change here in like maybe another 10 seconds. I don't want to like really build it up, but it's pretty fabulous because it's doing all the work for you. And when I say all the work, I really do mean all the work. 
boom, it just popped everything and it should be pretty much done, okay? See how it even changed it in the plugin for you? That's really cool. Now, what I love is not only do you have all of your elements over here that have updated or if they haven't, they're going to, but you also have, look, 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 check it out, check it out. This is the material theme, right? And we can create new themes and switch between themes if we want. How about Jesse's test theme? That's like an all purple one, okay? And uh, you can see like over here in my right hand panel, we have all of the styles for that, right? So for instance, we have all of your light colors, primary, and these are all very, very, like if you've ever designed or really read the Google material design guidelines, these are very material design in the way in which they use them, right? Like how about like, this is called primary on, like the text that should go on primary, primary container, on primary container. We see what we're doing here. So it's a really clean system. And if you get down with that system, you would really, really love the way this plugin is gonna build everything for you. So super fun um, and just a fantastic experience. So with that being said, we have hit all of fast UI design, fast color theory. Um, to get you started. You understand colors, you understand how to pick palettes, you understand some tools that might help you in that kind of landscape of creating. But what I'm a really big fan of is, you know, creating color palettes quickly anyways, because when you're inside of a tool like Figma, you can create local styles. You can make sure that everything is like really synced and really consistent using some of these tools like the material design theme builder and then you run with it if you don't like it later on you can then tweak and change things in your local variables or local styles that's going to cascade everything in your entire project so don't get hung up on color don't let color slow you down in the process over analyzing color is the death of progress and so you want to make sure that you keep pushing through that step where sometimes maybe you get a little bit stuck. Hey, if you have questions, let me know. We got a few more minutes left in this stream today. So excited to be here with you guys. Hey, if you are interested, if you want to have more live streams with me like this, if you want to get more engaged with me, consider becoming a design champion. Uh, we have monthly meetups, multiple live events. Uh, I think actually coming up in October, we have three events. One is going to be all about uh, all about building case studies. Let's actually go look. Why don't we just take a look really quickly at the events calendar for October. There's two events on the calendar right now for October. How to story tell in your case studies. That's happening in five days. So you could be a part of that one. We also do monthly design critiques where you can get your designs critiqued live by me as well as a group of 20, 30, 40 other creatives who join those calls. Super, super great. We've had great feedback. People just like game changing uh, feedback for people who are learning and growing as designers. So definitely come check that out. We're also doing a book club event that I haven't added to the calendar, but will all about freelancing. Uh, so we're gonna be reading a freelancing book together, discussing it, really cool. It's a place for you to find community, grow your skills, like hone and train and connect and you know feel encouraged. So jump into that. It's, a, it's great for equipping, great for training. Also, if you haven't yet signed up for my 30 day UI designer program, just go to 30dayui.com. Uh, sign up to be an early backer. All you got to do is reserve your slot for seven bucks. And on the day of launch, you get that 50% off coupon sent to you and only to you because you're special because you're special as an early backer. And thank you so much for joining me today on this live stream. I hope you've had a fantastic time. I have as well. Until the next time, keep using that color. Keep moving through that process. Use that fast color theory, making amazing things, designing amazing things. And we'll see you next time. Take care.